Hey guys. So in this video, we will show you our key trendline trading strategy that no one talks about. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so that you know exactly when we release new content. So from looking at the comments, a topic that has been requested many times is how to draw and use trend lines effectively. Also right now, comment below and tell us what topics you want us to cover as we always look at the comments to decide what to create next. So first, what are trend lines? A trend line is a line we draw on our charts that connects the swing highs and swing lows during a trending market. So here we have a clear downtrend. We have a run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, and a run. At the bottom of each run, before the pullback begins, this is what we call a swing low. At the top of each pullback, before a run begins, this is what we call a swing high. So what this means is, in an ideal downtrend, price will be making lower highs and lower lows. Now, a trend line is then applied to connect the swing highs along the top and swing lows along the bottom. So let's move on to an uptrend. Here we have a clear uptrend. We have a run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, and a run. At the top of each run, before the pullback begins, this is what we call a swing high. At the bottom of each pullback, before a run begins, this is what we call a swing low. So what this means is, in an ideal uptrend, price will be making higher highs and higher lows. Now a trend line is then applied to connect the swing highs along the top and swing lows along the bottom. Now this is an important point. Price won't always move this smoothly in trending markets, but we are showing you this as a reference to what an ideal trending price movement looks like. So why exactly do we draw trend lines? The first reason is because trend lines can act as a form of support or resistance. Along the top, the trend line acted as resistance when price touched it. And along the bottom, the trend line acted as support when price touched it. Now you don't enter trades blindly just because price has touched a trend line. You always wait for price action in combination with other factors, which we will get into later in this video. Now the second reason we draw trend lines is because a break of a trend line can signal a possible trend change. So in a downtrend, we have our trend line placed above the trend. When price breaks this trend line, it can signal a possible trend change to an uptrend. Now, vice versa. In this moving uptrend, we have our trend line placed below the trend. And when price breaks this trend line, it can signal a possible trend change to a downtrend. So again, you have your moving uptrend. We have our trend line placed along the bottom of the uptrend. Once price breaks this trend line, it signals a possible trend change to a downtrend. And again, once this downtrend starts, we put a trend line above the moving downtrend. And once price breaks this trend line, it signals to us another possible trend change to an uptrend. Again, here were your trend lines before you had your breaks and then trend changes. Now, this is a very important point. What we just showed you is what occurs in an ideal situation, but is not the law. You need to pair these trend line breaks or rejections with key price action factors before looking for a trade entry, which we will get into later in this video. So now that you know what trend lines are and why we apply them onto our charts, let's go through in depth how to draw trend lines effectively. So first, let's go through the concepts we follow when drawing trend lines. One. You need a minimum of two touches to be able to draw a trend line. The more touches, the better, but more touches does not guarantee that it will hold the next time around. Two, trends don't always move smoothly. They're often choppy and imperfect. Three, treat trend lines as areas, meaning use them as guidance for your overall analysis, not the law. Four, don't force trend lines. If they are obvious and help your overall analysis, draw them in. But if not, leave them out because there won't always be suitable price movement where you can draw a trend line on it. So now let's start simple with what ideal best case scenario trend lines will look like. Now here is your current moving downtrend. You click on your line drawing tool, start from past the first swing high and drag the line down connecting the two points. Also make sure when you draw your trend line, to have it extended further down. 
because if price makes it back up to this trend line in the future, you want to have it ready there as a reminder to look. So here was your last trend line that would have been drawn before price broke the trend line. Now, if you want, you can also draw this longer term trend line along these higher points like this. So next, here's your moving downtrend. And again, we connect the swing highs along the top. And the swing lows along the bottom. So next. Now, this is an important point we want to discuss. There isn't always a trend line you can draw as there isn't always going to be suitable price movement for a trend line to be applied to it. So to the left here, we had good price movement where you would have had two trend lines applied before price broke the bottom trend line and started a downtrend. But now looking at the current trend, there isn't suitable price movement to apply a trend line. You could apply a super tight trend line like this, but that does not help your overall analysis. So in this case, we leave it out. So let's get into imperfect trend lines. So a type of imperfect trend line you will often see is when not all the points are touching. What this means is when you draw a trend line, you won't always be able to connect all the swing highs or swing lows. So in that case, just draw your trend line where it can touch the most amount of points and leave the other points out. So here is a clear moving downtrend. And let's go ahead and apply our trend lines where we can get as many touches as possible. Now notice how these points here all touch the trend line, but where these points here do not touch. And that is perfectly fine because again, we use trend lines as guidance. We don't use them on their own for trade entries. So let's go to another example. So here we have our clear moving downtrend. We place our trend line along the top, connecting the swing highs, and we place our trend line along the bottom, connecting the swing lows. Now again, notice the points that we were able to connect with the trend line and the points that didn't quite reach the trend line, which again is fine. Now this leads us to a question we often get asked, which is do you draw your trend line through the candle closes, candle bodies, or wick ends? And at this point, you should already know the answer which is to draw your line in an area where you can get the most amount of touches, meaning the line you draw will hit both wicks and candle bodies depending on the trend you are looking at. So here was your clear downtrend. And in order to hit all these points here, this is where you would have placed your trend line. Now, notice how this point here, the trend line is at the wick end. And again, at this point here, the trend line is at the wick end. Now, at this third point, the trend line is piercing the wick and touching the candle body, which is necessary in order to be able to hit the following points. So again, the trend line hits the candle body, and here the trend line hits the wick end, and here the trend line hits the wick and body. Notice how the trend line hits candle closes and wicks, whichever allows for us to get the most amount of touches. Price then finally broke out and started a trend change. So same along the bottom, our trend line would be placed like this because that way we can hit all three points. So let's do this one more time. Here's your clear moving downtrend and along the top, we would place our trend line like this. Again, wick ends, doesn't touch, candle close, wick end. And along the bottom, we would place our trend line like this. So don't think too hard about this because again, we use trend lines as guidance and treat them as areas, not a solid line. Now that you know what trend lines are and how to draw them, let's jump into how to use trend lines in combination with price action. And before we continue, if you want us to make more videos more often, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and to comment below right now with your questions and thoughts as this lets us know you want more videos. So we use trend lines in combination with price action in two key ways. The first is for trend trading and the second is for reversal trading. Let's start with the first, which is trend trading with trend lines. Now here is exactly what you want to look for when trend trading with trend lines, which is an area where support or resistance crosses with a trend line. This axis point is also what we call an area of high confluence. Now, an area of high confluence is an area where a lot of traders have their eye on, meaning that there is a higher probability that traders will be taking action at these areas, which is when trade opportunities arise. 
So let's take this one step further. This area is of high confluence because different schools and types of traders are all watching it. First, you would have support and resistance traders eyeing this area for possible short trade entries. Second, you would have trend line traders eyeing this area for possible short trade entries. Third, you would have price action and candlestick traders eyeing this area for possible short trade entries. And fourth, you would have confluence traders like us who are eyeing areas like this where we know other schools of traders are watching for possible short trade entries. All these different types and schools of traders with different trading styles all eyeing this area for possible short opportunities is what can trigger a possible trade entry short. Now let's break this down step by step of what should be going through your mind as a trader. Also to point something out, we are only using one time frame in this example, which is the daily time frame. And the reason this is important is because later in this video, we will begin showing you how to use multi time frames. So first, you would have established that this is a moving downtrend as price was making lower highs and lower lows. So you would want to trade with the moving downtrend. Second, you would have identified your trend line through these three points and drawn it in and had it stretched out further in case price came back up to it. Third, you would have looked left and spotted the support turned resistance level here and had it drawn in. Fourth, you would have then identified this area of high confluence where your trend line and resistance level intersected, which means there would be possible short trade opportunities once price got here. Fifth, when price started to approach this area, since you had this area already identified, you were watching to see what price would do once it got here, aka price action. So you were probably thinking, why not just enter a trade short right away once price got to this access point? Again, as a reminder from past videos, it does not matter how good an area is. You do not enter trades blindly once price gets to these areas. You always wait for price action because price can easily blow right through. So you then had a reaction to the level through these two red candlesticks, not breaking through and bouncing downwards. Now, at this point, there is still no trade short because a reaction to an area does not equal a reversal. It could just bounce or stall at a key area and then still break right through. Do not forget that this is a moving uptrend. Now, here is the trick. In order to enter after a rejection of a key area of confluence, you put a trend line under the immediate moving trend and wait for a break of the trend line to occur in order to confirm that the moving uptrend is over and that the bigger downtrend can continue. This is a very important concept to understand because even though your bigger trend is a downtrend, your immediate trend is an uptrend and the moving uptrend can continue and break right through and trigger a larger trend change. This is why it was so important for the short term trend to be over through the trend line break so that the bigger trend can continue. Now, the most important point here is that the break of the short term trend line occurred after the rejection and bounce from an area of high confluence, or else you would have just had a short term trend line break and nothing else. Now, this is a lot to take in. So let's recap this one more time to drive the point home. First, your big picture trend was a downtrend. So you had a big picture bearish bias. The problem is your short term trend was an uptrend, meaning price is currently moving with bullish momentum and can easily break right through your long term trend line. This is why we needed to wait and see if we could get bearish price action to occur inside of the short term uptrend so that the short term trend would be bearish to match the long term bearish trend. Your bearish price action then came in two parts. The first was a reaction to the access point and area of high confluence. But more importantly, the confirmation of this was through the break of the short term trend line. And at this point, the short term trend was bearish to match the big picture bearish downtrend. You could then take a trade on the break of the trend line, a trade through the intraday timeframes, through a momentum play or using any of the other strategies as you now have your directional bias confirmed as short or down. Now, here's where you take your trading to the next level. If we had good candlestick patterns occurring right at this access point here, you would have placed a very short term trend line up tight like this and waited for a break of this tight trend line on the lower time frames and take an even earlier entry, which we'll get into right now. So let's jump to that. So in this example, we are going to show you the same concept, but take it a step further and apply the usage of multi time frames. Now, this is the daily time frame. We first identified that this was a moving downtrend through the lower highs and lower lows. And again, we want to trade with the dominant downtrend. 
you had your imperfect trend line established through these points here. So you had it drawn in and extended further down. To the left, you had your support turned resistance point here. So you had your level drawn in and extended further out. Again, this point here is where resistance and the trend line intersected and would be your access point, an area of high confluence. Now, as price came up to this access point, we had no idea whether price would break through or reverse because again, this short-term moving trend is an uptrend. Your big picture trend is bearish and a downtrend, but your short-term trend is bullish and an uptrend, which means you have a conflict in your directional bias. So in order to solve that, you need to wait for bearish price action to present itself inside of the short-term trend and to confirm that the short-term trend is over or else there is no trade. Now, the first thing we do when price gets to this access point is wait for some form of price action to present itself. Again, you don't know if there will be price action forming at all. In this case here, the price action formation we got was a hanging candlestick, which shows that price is indeed reacting to the level, but again, a reaction does not mean a reversal will occur. So here's where you take your skill set up a notch. Since we had a candlestick reaction and formation at this access point, we then put a tight trend line in like this. The problem with tight trend lines is that they can often lead to fake outs. So how do we get around this problem? We use a lower time frame, specifically the four hour time frame, so that we can see deeper into this immediate trend. So let's put the four hour time frame beside our daily time frame so you can see both simultaneously. So here we have both time frames side by side. This chart on the left is your daily time frame, meaning each candlestick represents one day. The chart on the right is the four hour time frame, meaning each candlestick represents four hours time. Here is the resistance level on the daily time frame, and here is the same resistance level on the four hour time frame. Here is the long term trend line on the daily time frame, and here is the same long term trend line on the four hour time frame. Here is the short term trend line on the daily time frame. And here is the same short term trend line on the four hour time frame. On the daily time frame short term uptrend, you couldn't see much. But now, in contrast, on the four hour time frame, you can see so much more detail. You can actually see the swing highs and swing lows of price. Now that you understand multi time frames, let's recap this all. You had a big picture downtrend, meaning a long term bearish bias, but a short term uptrend, meaning a short term bullish bias which means you are conflicted in your direction. Once price gets to your access point and area of high confluence, you need price action for a trade short. Since you had a reaction to the access point through the hanging candle, you put a tight trend line in. But because on the daily time frame, you cannot see deeper into the short term uptrend, you needed to use the four hour time frame to look deeper into the short term uptrend. Here in the four hour time frame, we were then looking for a trend change on this moving uptrend so that the short term uptrend could turn bearish to match the long term bearish downtrend. You have a run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, a run, a pullback, a run. This is your clear uptrend because price is making higher highs and higher lows. So here it is. Price then broke the short term trend line, which is your bearish signal number one and then makes a lower low, your bearish signal number two. You now have bearish price action that entered the market, confirming that the short term uptrend is over and that the longer term downtrend can continue. Now, again, there are many ways to enter the market. You can enter right on the break through a momentum play using the lower time frames. But the most important part is that your directional bias is confirmed now as down and short. So the key here is that this all occurred after the rejection and bounce from an area of high confluence, or else you would have just had a trend line break, and that would be meaningless. Now, why is it important to use the four hour time frame to look for a trend change after the rejection of your access point? Well, because without the trend change or trend line break, price could have easily done this instead and kept making higher highs and higher lows and kept respecting the immediate short term uptrend and broke right through the long term trend line. So let's take this concept a step further. Now, in this example, we'll show you another trick you can use if you are a longer term trader, which is instead of using the daily time frame and four hour time frame, using the weekly in combination with the daily for swing trade entries. So this is the weekly time frame, and this is the daily time frame. 
Remember that in a previous video, we stated that things you find on the weekly timeframe hold more weight. So let's go through the process again. Here in the weekly, you have the clear moving downtrend as prices making lower highs and lower lows. So you want to trade with the moving big picture downtrend. You then had your trend line established through these two points here. You had multiple rejections and your support turned resistance zone here. Here is your access point and area of high confluence where the trend line and resistance crossed. Once price got here, you had two weekly candles that failed to break through, including a bearish red candle that rejected the weekly resistance level. Again, bounces and reactions don't equal trades. So we put a short term trend line below the immediate trend. Now, in order to look for short trade entries, you need to confirm that the short term uptrend is over. So we need to go to the daily time frame to look for a trend change in bearish price action inside of this current moving uptrend before looking for a trade entry short. Now, here in the daily time frame, this is your same trend line from the weekly, the same resistance level from the weekly, the same access point from the weekly, and the same uptrend and trend line from the weekly. So here is your moving uptrend where you have a run, a pullback, a run before you had your break of the trend line in a lower low. And you can start looking for trade entries short through a breakout or intraday entry. Again, the key here is that this all occurred after the rejection and bounce from an area of high confluence or else you would have just had a trend line break and that would be meaningless. Now we're going to take it even one step further. Now, this is where we introduce true top down analysis. We will be using three timeframes starting from the weekly to the daily, then to the four hour timeframe. So, starting with the weekly, we were in a clear moving downtrend. Here was the weekly support turned resistance. Here was your trend line. Here was your access point. Now, after you identified all your levels on the weekly, we jump to the daily. Here on the daily, you had a perfect long wick candle rejection of your access point meaning a rejection of both the weekly trend line and weekly resistance. But again, still no trade unless we have confirmation that the short term uptrend is over. So we go to the four hour time frame to find a trend change on the short term moving uptrend. Here in the four hour time frame, you have your weekly and daily resistance, weekly and daily trend line and weekly and daily access point. You then have your short term trend line here. And once price hits the access point, and then breaks the short term trend line, your short term trend turns bearish and matches the long term bearish downtrend. And this is when you start looking for trade entries short as all time frames are bearish and confluent. So now that you understand how to use trend lines for trend trading, let's move on to the second way to use trend lines, which is through reversal trading. Now, before we continue, these videos take a lot of time for our team to create. So if you are enjoying the video so far and want us to continue to make more videos, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and to comment below right now with your questions and thoughts, and we'll work our best to answer all your questions and to create videos around your requests. So in this section, we are going to go through a reversal trading strategy with trend lines. Now, what you do is you look for key price action patterns that have formed right before a trend line break. Now, there are many kinds of price action patterns you can look for, such as wedges, triangles, combining price action patterns with candlesticks, and so forth, as there are a lot. But for now, focus on these two, the double top or double bottom price action pattern and the trend change price action pattern. So let's start with the first, which is the double top or double bottom right before a trend line break. You first identify your trend line through these points here. Now, this is a clear moving uptrend. And the reason you want to identify a reversal price action pattern right before a trend line break is because you are going against the dominant uptrend. What this means is just a trend line break can often be a fake out. So we like to pair a reversal pattern as an early signal of a possible big picture trend change, but then to pair it with the trend line break as confirmation. So the price action pattern we got was this double top, which is a reversal pattern. Now, what does the double top tell us in terms of the uptrend? Well, it shows that price failed to make a higher high, which means this is a loss of momentum. Now, if you have seen our previous videos, evidently many traders would have taken a trade right at this long wick candle rejection of resistance and then waited for an intraday trend change. But for more secure traders, what you can do is wait for the trend line break to confirm that the uptrend is over. 
This is also a good example of why you should never chase trades as you had trade opportunities right at the double top, but also had opportunities to enter through a breakout strategy after the trend line break. Now, if this were a downtrend, you would look for a double bottom. So let's jump to the next pattern we look for right before a trend line break, which is a trend change price action pattern. So in order to spot a trend change, you look for these traits specifically. In an uptrend, you look for a lower high or a lower low to occur right before a trend line break. And in a downtrend, you look for a higher low or a higher high to occur right before a trend line break. So here is your moving uptrend. And we place our trend line below the uptrend, connecting these points here. You have your run, pullback, run, pullback, run, pullback, run, pullback. Now at this point during the trend, you have a clear uptrend as price is making higher highs and higher lows. It is not until you have your lower high form here, which is when you would think to yourself that a lower high in an uptrend shows a loss of momentum. Once price then breaks the trend line, this confirms the trend change and shows bearish momentum entering the market. Again, the reason you want to look for reversal price action patterns before a trend line break is because it shows momentum loss, which is important when you go against a strong trend. So let's take this one step further and add in multi time frame analysis to this concept. So here on the weekly time frame, what you would have first identified is that this was a moving downtrend. You then identified your trend line through these two points here. You would have then identified this double bottom through these two points here. So what you do is you want to jump down a time frame to the daily so that you can see more detail into the price action that is occurring within this double bottom and look for a trend change price movement. So here in the daily, you have your same trend line from the weekly and your same area of support from the weekly. Here is where the double bottom occurred on the weekly time frame. And again, we see a lot more detail on this daily time frame. So again, in order to confirm the weekly double bottom reversal pattern, you want to also look for bullish price action that shows a trend change from a downtrend to an uptrend on this time frame. And you got this through the following things. You have your clear moving downtrend through the run, pullback, run, pullback, run. Price then failed to make a lower low and made a same low showing a loss of momentum. So you have a double bottom inside of a double bottom. And then a higher high, which is the first sign of a possible trend change. You then had another higher low, which is another trend change signal. After you had your trend line break, you would then look for breakout entries through the intraday and lower timeframes. So this topic of using multi timeframes and timeframe confluence gets even deeper and would take too long to completely explain in one video, but we will continue to build on it in future videos. Now, this is a very important point we want you to understand, which is that trading comes down to the simple concept of trade quality, meaning there are low quality trades and high quality trades. The more you learn means the more you can see, which then allows you to choose between okay trades and high quality trades. Think back to the past videos where we showed you the importance of candlestick patterns at key levels. And of course, you can enter just like that, but those are average quality trades. What you want to do is take high quality trades and knowing the concepts we have introduced in this video will help you build towards that end game. Increasing trade quality is knowing when not to take trades, which is just as important as knowing when to take trades. So if you want to learn more about our trade entry strategies, head on over to our website at wisetrade.com. So if you enjoyed this video and want us to make more videos more frequently, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and also comment below with your thoughts and what kind of topics you want us to cover as this lets us know you want more videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.